Hey YouTube, thanks for checking out RV Daydream. Let's talk about generator boxes and how to build one. What have you been up to? I've been riding on a daydream. For anybody that just joined on with us, uh, we are a couple that just went full-time RVing. However, we're still in our driveway, but our house is for sale. I don't know if you can see the for sale sign out there. And uh, we have uh, some work being done inside. We got an open house coming up. Hopefully we can get it sold, but we still do have the house, but everything we own inside this RV, other than uh, the stuff that's in the garage that's gonna go in the back of the truck, I got some projects I'm doing on that too. So if you'd like to find out what we're all about, uh, go ahead and like and subscribe our channel. Uh, click the bell notification so you get told whenever we have videos come up. And go back and look at all of our videos. We've got over 500 of them and uh, some of our live chats. I'm real good about live chats. Some of them about five hours long. <laughs> so today we're talking about the generators and I need to kind of walk you through the process so there's not a lot of questions because I'm assuming a lot of you are probably new viewers that might be watching this. So first of all, why would you need a generator with your RV? I just go to the campground and I plug in, I got all the power I need. Well, there's a lot of us that travel a lot and we may stop overnight or maybe we're boondocking out in an area that there is no power. So you need a generator to do something for you. Now, the best way to do it is get the smallest generator that you can get by with because it uses the, the least amount of gas and it's usually quieter and it's lighter, it's easier to carry and transport and all that stuff. However, the one thing that everybody likes to do, especially in the summer when we all go camping, is run the air conditioner. So now you're into a problem that can only be solved a few different ways. One of them is get a whole bunch of solar panels and a high dollar inverter system that allows whatever electricity your little generator makes to connect with the batteries and put out enough voltage you might be able to run your rooftop air conditioner. Of course that's kind of expensive. That's it's not kind of expensive, that is expensive. Uh, the other way is to buy a bigger generator that you can just fire up and plug in your RV and have all the power you want. Now if you don't know, as far as RV etiquette goes, it's all about trying to be as quiet as possible. You don't want to disturb whatever other people might be at Walmart parking lot with you or uh, maybe out in the desert you happen to come and park in an area and there's five people. You don't want to get out one of these big contractor open frame generators and what I mean is not an inverter generator these these inexpensive generators that are just really crazy loud you don't want to do that you don't want to necessarily have that big generator uh, for a few reasons and one of them is uh, of course the size and the amount of gas that they use they don't have an inverter technology they run at a high idle all the time where these inverter generators they'll only run at the RPM needed uh, to run whatever appliances or whatever demand you put on the generator. So you can get an idea, you want a small generator, but you want to run your rooftop air conditioner. So that's where I did a micro air easy start install. And I've got a couple of micro airs that are in each air conditioner up top. Even though I don't need them in both air conditioners, it's nice because we can choose which air conditioner we want to use. The thing is, is power management is also going to be a consideration when running a smaller generator. But the benefits of the smaller generator is it uses less gas, it's smaller footprint, it's lighter to carry, it's easier to store, uh, it's easier to mount, um, it's easier to protect from the elements. However, it's also easier for it to be stolen uh, and you still need to protect it from the elements and you still need to secure it. And we've run into situations where we have been down south where it's been hot in the summer and we've stopped at a Walmart parking lot and maybe we don't know the area. It might be a little bit shady there. We want to go to sleep for the night and just, you know, get recharged for the next day. However, as far as what is in the surroundings, we want to make sure that our generator stays protected. It stays hidden, that it stays quiet, as quiet as possible. But, but it's also in case it rains, it's not getting wet. Uh, there's a lot of reasons to keep it secured somewhere while it's running. Now I know a lot of you are already probably start typing. Go ahead and take your fingers off the keyboard. I can't put it in the bed of my truck. I have a cab. This is our garage. This is where we keep all the stuff 
that would normally be in our garage uh, in the bed of the truck plus the blue boy tank plus there's a freshwater tank we have a ladder we have a canopy we have lawn chairs we have a trash can uh, we have tools I mean we've got supplies we got all kinds of stuff but we don't have that So you can get an idea that all that stuff that's in the back of the truck, um, if I drop my tailgate and start running the generator back there, even if it's chained up, everything else in the back of the truck is pretty much free game for somebody that wants to take anything. Now, I'm not paranoid. I don't think everybody's out there to steal. But I do like the fact that if it's you know raining, um, everything's kind of dry and, and secure in the back of my truck. I don't want to open that up uh, for you know a generator run not only that but this isn't a good situation to be putting a hot exhausted generator on because it'll melt this stuff I mean it's pretty it's pretty strong but it will melt it and again fumes might build up in here and, and we may have like our winter clothes stored in a tote back here um, I don't want that stuff exposed to the heat and the fumes so even if I put this up um, now it's even worse and it's it's containing that heat even more remember even though i have a, a hoodie on today um you know we've been to where the back of this truck's already at 100 degrees 115 degrees and then i put an exhaust in here not a good idea now i know that a lot of you think oh well why don't you just run your generator inside but the exhaust pipe outside and you could probably pull down your window in that i'm gonna tell you right now that that exhaust heat that comes out of course it's hot of course it's carbon monoxide all that stuff that's right on par though with how hot that stuff is that's coming off of the engine cooling all these small engines have blower motors in them or fans that keep that engine cool and that heat that's coming off of that engine especially when you're running a 15,000 BTU air conditioner in the middle of the summer um, that's some hot air that's coming off of that generator even though the exhaust might be coming out the hot air that's coming off of the engine it's not it'll stay in there the other thing is my RV power hookup, like most RV power hookups, they're near the back of the RV or at least the middle of the RV. They're not on the front unless you have a fifth wheel. That's a whole different story. Of course, a fifth wheel, you can put a generator in the back of your truck. But in our case, again, we're a travel trailer. We can't do that. Now let's talk about where you're going to mount this generator and how you're going to secure it. Well, the best way to secure it is mounting it to the RV. However, you got to keep it protected from the weather. And if it's raining out, it could be hot and raining. Um, you definitely don't want your generator just out in the rain. So a lot of people might try to throw them underneath the RV. That's not the best. That's not the best idea to do that because the fumes from that generator could just kind of stay underneath. And in the middle of the night, you might have a carbon monoxide going off. Or the middle of the night might be your last night. <laughs> it might be you don't wake up in the morning. So you really don't want to trap your exhaust underneath your RV. Even though it would protect the generator, it's not protecting you. So mounting the generator, that's an option. But again, protecting it that's and securing it, th those are the other two things you want to do. So now you got to decide where you're going to secure it. Now, on our old RV, we had a big champion generator, and I mounted it on the tongue of the RV. It's going to be uh, sweet because I'm tired of hauling that generator in the back of the truck. close everything is and I've cut the back of the cover off uh, and I can make this work I mean I, I can make this work but I don't know if I really want to um, I, think I didn't have a box for it but the reason I mounted it on the tongue is because I found that if I put too much weight on the back of the RV with that little uh, trailer um, my tongue weight got unsafe you need to have a certain amount of tongue weight on the front of your RV going down the road um, but not only that, our bed was in the back of the old camper, uh, so the generator was in the front. Made all its noise up there, even though it wasn't crazy, it was in the front. So I didn't have to worry about hearing it, for the most part, in the back of the RV where the bed was. In our case, this RV is the exact opposite. The bedroom's in the front, the living room's in the back. Still though, I don't want a lot of vibration, I don't want a lot of noise. That's what we did, so you have to be considerate of your tongue weight. Now, if you add it to the back of your RV, guess what? Like I mentioned on that small one, you could have a little bit too much weight taken off of your tongue, 
and that is a bad situation i see people go down the road and their trailers are all swaying back and forth and it's just because of that it's because they've taken away their tongue weight to the point where there's not enough weight on the the front where it's being towed and directed so it likes to try to direct itself and steer itself get a tongue scale i've talked about this in a previous video go check out that video and see what the difference is because I could sit on the back of that old RV and I could actually make it to where it's unsafe. In our case, we have a Pro Pride hitch on the front. I have a couple batteries and two 30 pound tanks. We have the cargo bay in the front and uh, we're over a thousand pounds for our tongue weight and the trailer only weighs out 8,800 pounds when it's fully loaded. So we have plenty of tongue weight. So much so that I could take some of that weight uh, that's on the front and negated a little bit by adding to the back of the RV. So twofold for us, our bedrooms in the front, all the more reason to put the generator in the back. We have heavy tongue weight in the front, all the more reason to put the generator in the back. So now that you're putting the generator in the back, you're going to mount it in the back. The first thing you think of is, oh, I'll just get some angle bracket. I'll just screw into that steel bumper and I'll be good. No, 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 no. Those bumpers aren't made to handle that kind of weight. So there's a company, it's, I actually have their sweatshirt on today, Mount N Lock, that's the name of the company, Mount N Lock. And they offer a lot of products, and I used them in the past on the old RV. One of them is uh, these safety uh, brackets that will cradle the bumper and keep it from twisting off because those factory steel bumpers they put on the RVs, they, they're made to handle maybe a bike rack or maybe a spare tire, but that's about it. If you put anything more than that, it really wants to make those things fall off. They, you know, just peel away from their welds. So they make these safety struts that go underneath. You, you bolt them to the frame of your RV, um, and they cradle that bumper and keep it from twisting. And it does allow it to, to handle more weight. Um, as far as the generator and generator boxes and generator trays and stuff like that, you got to watch. you got to figure out how much weight you can get away with. And there's some formulas you have to do. Uh, but that mount and lock, they can help you out. Give them a call. That guy's out there is great. Uh, he, he, just super people. That's what we did. Uh, that's what we have. And uh, again, you don't have to go to this extreme, but let me show you at least talking about that. And we'll get our first glimpse of these boxes. What we have is... Uh, heavy hauler kit that's what they call it the heavy hauler bumper and what this does is allow you to cut away your factory bumper get rid of it make sure that you uh, check with your factory warranty uh, it may negate your frame warranty cut off the factory steel bumper and in this case we have a middle of the road this isn't the smallest this isn't the biggest this is the middle of the road this is a five inch heavy hauler bumper and it just bolts in place of what you cut off it gives you uh, still, you know, a big provision for your stinky slinky to go in here, which right now I can't, whatever reason, I can't open that. There we go. <laughs> I was squeezing it too hard. Uh, lots of room for your stinky slinky in there. Um, kind of nice. I, I, I'm really happy that we have that extra space, to tell you the truth. Uh, more importantly, uh, it gives you the ability to support 600 pounds of weight now on the back. Now that 600 pounds can only be one foot out, so that's about roughly here. So you got to figure that if you're going further out, you got to do calculations. There's some math involved to what you can get away with. And you also have to take in consideration the weight of the trays that you're using. Now, in this case, these are steel trays. These are Jenny Go trays. And they're just like the name suggests, they're for generators. Now, there's a lot of people that would get uh, just the minimum. And I'd have no problem with that. And that would be your factory steel bumper that's on there. You mount the safety struts, and then you get a Jenny Go tray, and then you just mount your generator to one of those trays over the bumper. Yeah, these things, the way they're designed, they're really cool. You can actually put this over top of the bumper. So let's go ahead and talk about the boxes. So now we've already talked about the weight consideration, what you gotta look out for. Um, and now you're talking about your generator choice. Now I could easily just put a Champion uh, 3400 generator on the back here that runs on propane and be done with the whole situation. I've done those talks in the past about those generators and they're awesome. There's nothing wrong with them. That Champion 3400, it's a dual fuel generator, runs on gas or propane. If you run it on propane, uh, you can get 12 hours running an air conditioner uh, on one 20-pound propane tank. 
Uh, it's all in one. It's electric start. Uh, it's it's a nice design. Uh, the problem that I was having is trying to protect the generator, trying to protect it again. And it was a little bit noisier than what these Hondas are. Um, it's it's heavier. It's about 110 pounds. Um, other than that, you could get away with that and just mount one tray over the bumper and again, do everything that I talked about. Um, even without those rooftop uh, systems up there uh, in the air conditioners. But I wanted to go with a small generator, one that sipped fuel, one that was very quiet to be considerate of our neighbors. And that's why I went with the Honda 2200. Now the Honda 2200 isn't very big, but I do have a relatively big box that's housing that. So let's talk about that. So this box here, which the link is down below, is bigger than what the generator needs by a lot. But you could see some of the reasons why I did that. First of all, check this out. This vent, it protrudes into. Same here, and it takes away from some of the space this generator has. I have a fan in here, even though this fan may not be needed with this extra cooling that I've got to uh, with these vents, uh, I still went with these uh, fan that is just off an old dehumidifier. You can do whatever fan you feel like. And I needed that space. The other thing is, is now that I have this extra space, I can store the 30 amp, 50 amp cord that we're going to use, probably a 30 amp cord, uh, because of course this isn't generating that much electricity, the 30 amp cord that plugs into the side of the RV. So all the excess can stay in here and not interfere with anything to do with this fan. But I think that this is the perfect size. I really do. Uh, I don't think that I would go any smaller. So the links are going to be down below for everything that we used for the build. And it's relatively simple. You buy the box. The box is kind of expensive, but it's a good buyer's made in America box, locking box, watertight. This is a truck box. This is kind of stuff you see on dump trucks underneath of them. Then I'm going to include the links for these vents. Now there's two different vents on this one, but you only need uh, two of the same. And that's this big one here. I kind of found out later that I could go with a bigger vent after I installed the first one. So just to let you know, you're going to see a part number down below for this vent because it's the better vent. Uh, there is a modification that I made. I don't know if you can tell, but if you see this hole here, that's where this vent used to mount. These screws hold these louvers in place, but I moved one of them up and that's how much I moved it up and made the angle change because the heat from the generator just really comes out of this area. I mean, quite a bit, a lot. This is what the vent looked like when I originally got it. And you can see the little tiny gap that's here. Now on the air intake side, that's not such a big deal, but on the exhaust side, especially down low, that's a huge deal. So you're gonna to wanna to do the same thing. You're gonna to wanna to move this vent up. I had to trim a little piece in the back. I don't know if you can see, but there's a lip that's on this one here that's no longer on this one. And that allowed the angle to be, uh, you know, more of a 90, which is not 90, but it, it got closer to 90 than the other ones did. And that's all it was required. So be aware you're gonna to have to make that slight modification, not a big deal. The other thing you have to do of course is cut these now I used a uh, cutoff wheel to do a lot of the cuts uh, I used a skill saw you know a little uh, jigsaw uh, you could try that if you have a metal blade um, I used a sawzall you could do that that cuts it real easy uh, it will be messy there'll be shavings everywhere just be cautious and then of course I used a hole saw to cut these ports back here these ports are just regular cable hatches now some people might put a plug here and try to wire in directly to the I don't want to mess with any of that I mean you can do that it'll look nice but I didn't want to do any of that so I didn't um, I just made it to where the cable passes through I mean RVs have been using those cable hatches for a long time the other thing is I have a couple of eyelets that go down through uh, those eyelets uh, hold a ratchet strap that hold this down. Now you're seeing the cover. The cover's there for transport. You can see how much ventilation is going on here when you drive down the road and the water's just churning behind the RV because of all the negative pressure. Um, I don't want that entering into the box. And if it does, I don't want it to get on the generator. Now, I don't know if it's a problem with this setup, um, but if it is, I do have some holes down here that the water can leave. Uh, the plywood that it's mounted on 
is just the perimeter that goes all the way around. It's all open in the center. That way the water has a way to get out through these holes that are drilled already or opened already into these trays. So the water will leave underneath of that. And the plywood, it's treated plywood. You can just pick it up in any hardware store. It's three quarter inch. And that does a couple things for me. In my case, it allows me to open the door a little bit further uh, because it does hit these uh, gates or these protectors. Um, but it also gives me an insulation quality. It helps with the vibration. The other thing is loosen this ratchet strap when you're running it um, because there's rubber feet on here and these rubber feet are made to allow the generator to move so they don't transfer the vibration that's going on. Um, it's basically a shock absorber and if you take and compress those shock absorbers with this uh, ratchet strap and run the generator like that, not good. Now the other thing I did was, uh, again the links will be down below, is weld a stub onto the muffler and have the exhaust exit out. You might be able to get away with not doing that, but I think that there'll be a lot of heat that's not leaving as easily, especially if you don't have a fan. Again, I might be able to run this without a fan. I'm not 100% sure, but I think I might be able to. Um, but I'm playing it safe for the time being. We'll have to see when we get into some really hot temperatures down south in the middle of the summer if that fan is needed to keep it cool inside here. Uh, if not, I'll, I'll give you an update on that. So as far as the box itself and making these provisions and, and putting the generator in there, um, you're still going to be expensive. I mean, the box, you're talking, it's like $300 for the box, and you're talking about $50 each for these vents. Just those two things alone, you know, you're now at $400, and there's people that are making boxes out there. But I don't think that some of these other companies um, are taking into consideration how important it is for the ventilation. Uh, it seems like that they know what they're doing, but honestly, if they're going to burn up your generator, are they going to back it up? You know, are they going to say, hey, that's our fault? Um, most likely not. And the thing is, is these generators are built so well, uh, they will operate under adverse conditions for a long time. Not as long as they would if you would do what you're supposed to, but still, they will operate under adverse conditions for quite some time. So I... I, I decided to make one that was definitely ventilated well enough. Now as far as this cover, whenever we get to where we need to go, um, all I do is just pull this exhaust pipe off, you see. It doesn't take anything. It'll hold position there. It doesn't need to be tightly sealed up against there. It, it, it does a good job. It expands when it gets hot and it seals off. But anyways, I take the cover off and then we just put the exhaust pipe back on just like that and we're good. So that will get you the generator box. That, in addition with those micro air soft starts up there, this will allow you to run your RV on uh, this generator as far as the air conditioner is concerned for the night. Not only that, but I can close the box. It can be pouring down rain. Nothing's getting wet inside there. Uh, again, the cover's on there for transport reasons more than anything else. When the cover is off, when the generator's running, when it is pouring down the rain, these vents do fine getting rid of the water. The other thing I want you to be aware of is, you can see I have this box right up against the edge. The reason is, is we used to have the box back just about this far. And what we found was that the heat was just kind of hanging out in this area. Not only that, but this keeper, this gate was facing up and it was just kind of storing all the heat. Uh, not a good situation, so that's why we moved it to the edge. So wherever you mount your box, realize there's going to be a, a serious amount of heat that's coming out of here. It's not crazy heat, but you're talking about 150 degrees on a 75 degree day that's going to be generated. Um, and in my case, if this box was back just a little bit, that's how hot this tray got, and it became a heat sink. Um, also, it kept the heat in this area again to where some of it stayed a little bit closer to the generator than it should. All right, so now that you've seen that, you're probably thinking, well, what's this little box? Well, this is for the extended run gas tank, and that's what that other port is in the back, just like this one has a port too. Again, the link will be down below for this, the gas tank, the whole setup. And what this does is allow me to run, which I've already done testing on this. You can go back and see that video. I can run this generator whenever I fill the gas tank. It's a one gallon gas tank on the generator. And this is a six gallon gas tank here. If both of those are full, I can run the air conditioner in the summer 
for 36 hours straight on that amount of gas. So that's three overnight stays at a Walmart that I can do. Now, nobody's going to stay at Walmart for three days, but you might be traveling across the country. You might run it one night. No big deal. You got plenty. Might run it second night. Ten hours sleep. No big deal. The next night after that, you still have enough fuel for another 16 hours worth of running. So it's nice to know that you have that extra gas. Not only that, but I don't have to refuel as much. And I don't necessarily have to keep a gas can in the back of the truck, which I probably will, but I don't have to necessarily. So this is the system. This is the setup. Uh, I just wanted to show you this is some of the options that you have available whenever you are out on the road and you want to do some boondocking or some parking lot uh, overnight stays and you want to run your air conditioner again power management turn off your air conditioner you can fire up your microwave the generator will handle microwave no problem um, as far as turning off the microwave turning off the air conditioner if you don't have any propane you could turn on your hot water tank element inside there um, I know that with this generator running we can turn on our rooftop air I can run my 15,000 BTU air conditioner I can have my computer on and I can have my TV set on in there and not have a problem whatsoever uh, so just to let you know that's what you can do with it so I hope this helped out um, I didn't want to get into the specifics of everything but uh, I did want to tell you or give you the ability to buy exactly what I have and repeat this exact same thing so all the links are going to be in the description if you want to help support this channel, uh, show your appreciation for the information that you just got, uh, please use the links. It doesn't cost you anything, but it means everything to me whenever I start seeing those little pennies, that three-quarter of a penny or whatever, <laughs> come back from the return on this. So, uh, again, there was a lot of options out there. Again, kind of expensive, I know, but I like the fact that I did this myself. I bought it in pieces, and I got to customize it the way I wanted to. And through all this trial and error, I found the right way to do it. This is definitely the right way to do it. So I appreciate it, guys. And as always, we hope to see you out there. Bye.